electrons and energy levels. The electron movement uh, around an atomic nucleus is restricted to fixed regions of space. We looked at it according to the Bohr-Rutherford model. Okay, where we had our nucleus and we had something called orbitals or shells in which electrons um, circle around, okay, orbited around. But now we're going to move away from that image. That was a simple way to kind of describe where the electrons are. But it's not correct because it, in actuality, when we have within the nucleus, we carry what? Protons and, protons and neutrons, right? So protons and neutrons. But now they don't, these electrons don't just circle around in a fixed shell, so to speak. They pretty much circle within the energy levels. Okay, so what we tried to show you using a Bohr-Rutherford diagram, okay, were to show you really where the electrons lie. So in actuality though, the first, what we used to call orbital, is really an energy level. Within that first energy level, what are the maximum number of electrons that we can fit? Two. How many in the next energy level? Eight. So the same rules apply, it's just now we're using proper terminology. So these orbitals that we knew as orbitals are no longer called orbitals. We're going to refer to them as energy levels. Okay. So as we move, remember as we said, the period number told us how many orbitals in, in, in the beginning class. Now we're going to look at the, the same period number now tells us how many energy levels there are in that atom. So these volumes of space in which electrons may be found are known as energy levels. An electron that is moving in a lower energy level is closer to the nucleus and thus has less energy than it would have if it were in the higher energy levels. Okay. So the closer they are, remember, we cannot move to the next energy level until the inner energy levels are completely full. Right? And any electrons found on the outermost energy level are the valence electrons. So electrons within energy levels. There is a limit to the number of electrons that can occupy each energy level, as we said. Two in the first energy level, eight in the next, uh, eight in the third. Okay. Now, the periodic trends that result from organizing the elements by their atomic number are linked to the way in which electrons occupy and fill energy levels. So if we look at hydrogen and helium in the diagram, Notice we have electrons that are found on their first energy level. Okay. Now, if we move to period number two, we have two energy levels. Okay. And they're listed by the following. So we have lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon. So we're looking at period number two, and all of them contain one, two energy levels. And they don't really, the, the electrons don't circle around in that fixed, you know, outer ring. It's pretty much... We show it this way to simplify the diagram, make the, the diagram a little more understandable. Okay. So, patterns based on energy levels and electron arrangement. Structure of the periodic table is closely related to energy levels and the arrangement of electrons. Two important patterns are a result of this relationship. So, the periods and the group numbers. So remember what we talked about, the, uh, the periods. What did the periods give us? The, the periods are the numbers on the side. What did they tell us? And now use today's terminology. Energy. energy levels, right? So the periods give us the energy levels. So if, we're, if we have an atom that is on period number three, how many energy levels does it have? Three. Okay. What did the group number tell us? What did the group numbers tell us? Exactly, the number of valence electrons. So, we're going to look at the period-related pattern. As stated previously, elements in period 1 have electrons in one energy level. And the elements in period 2 have electrons in two energy levels. This pattern applies to all seven periods. Okay, so if we're on period number 7, seven energy levels. Okay. So an element's period number is the same as the number of energy levels that the electrons of its atoms occupy, just as it was stated. Now, group-related pattern. All elements in each main group have the same number of electrons in their highest energy level, their outer, right? And these, as we said, the valence electrons. 
These are the electrons involved during chemical bonding because remember, any energy level that is already full okay, will not try to react with anything else. It's the electrons that are on the outermost energy level that actually are involved because those are the ones that are closest to pretty much reacting with another atom that comes in its, within its vicinity. Okay. So they are responsible for the chemical behavior of the elements. So as we said, the group number, okay? But now what do we do with group number 13, 14, 15? They don't have that many valence electrons. So what do we do? So if you look at group 13, okay, which has boron, carbon, nit uh, sorry, boron, aluminum, what, uh, how many valence electrons? How many valence electrons would boron aluminum have? Three, right? So we drop the one. So in group 13, that's why if you notice on your periodic table how it's labeled, it's labeled as 3A, right? So if you, you are looking at a periodic table where it's labeled as 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, you drop the one. In, in reading the number. And that's how many valence electrons there are. So something that is in group 17 would have seven valence electrons. Okay. So here we have group one, all one valence electron. Group two, so significance of the full outer energy level. The noble gases in group 18 are the only elements that exist as individual atoms in nature. Okay, very unreactive. One thing, when we look at the naming, you've never seen neon bonded to chlorine. Okay, you've never seen helium bonded to a fluorine. Okay, or a sodium. Okay. So, reason is, chemists believe that having a full outer energy level must be a very stable electron arrangement. So its outer energy level is unlikely to change. So when atoms have eight electrons in their outer energy level and only two for helium, they are set to have a stable octet, which represents a very stable electron arrangement. Okay. So in actuality, all atoms try to reach this stable octet in some way when they form bonds with other atoms. Right? Metals will lose their valence electrons from that outermost energy level to mimic its nearest noble gas. Because remember, that's really, uh, if you look back at the periodic table, the most stable elements in this periodic table are which ones? The noble gases. So any atom that is trying to reach some kind of stability is trying to resemble its nearest noble gas.